Hi guys, my name's Aymara and I am a third year medical student at University of Nottingham. Now, when I was approaching my very first clinical rotation, I asked some of your favourite med grammars what their best tip was for succeeding during the clinical years of medical school. These years are when you're mostly based on wards across different specialties. I got some really great responses back, which even include a tip from a junior doctor. Now, I really recommend that before watching this video, you check the timestamps in the description, which will also contain a bunch of resources that they've recommended. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the post notifications, as well as follow the lovely people that are involved in this video. Now, unfortunately, placement won't be a 24-7, saving lives, adrenaline fueled saga. There'll be many times where you're waiting around hours for a doctor that ends up not telling you that they took sick leave or that didn't tell you they'd taken annual leave for the next two weeks. I used to think that this was just happening to me and that my peers were out there cannulating patients, um, inserting endotracheal tubes and taking histories, but I ended up finding out that in fact this was most people's experience. Another annoying part of placement can be the commute. Now, I remember in my recent placement, I literally once commuted two hours just for a session that was one hour long. Now, the method I've developed to study whilst I'm on placement is to make Anki cards out of the learning objectives that are provided. However, usually I'm way too tired when I come back from placement to actually review these cards, or I have specific learning packages or commitments that I need to do, or I literally just need to do chores. So I took the plunge and downloaded the Anki app onto my phone, which I think cost something like $21.99. But to be fair, it's the best money I've spent all year. And that is because during those really long commutes and during the hours I was waiting around for doctors and nurses, I was able to literally just whip up my phone and do Anki cards. Literally the days that I've done the most Anki cards have been the days that I've been on placement all day. So whatever study method you use, whether it's Anki or whether it's something else, I recommend that you find a way to make sure that you can access it on the go so that you can keep revising and keep topping up and consolidating your knowledge even when you're waiting around on the wards and to and from placement. That means you'll have less consolidation to do at home, you'll have less on your plate when you arrive home, and you'll definitely end up achieving a better work-life balance. What is going on good people? My name is Naeem Murray and I'm a third year medical student studying at the University of Central Lancashire. I'm also a YouTuber and I go by the name Naeem Murray. Uh, you can check out my channel, similar videos to Aymara. Today I'm going to be telling you guys about two tips actually that I've sort of learned in the last seven months of my clinical placement and the beginning of my clinical years is that. Number one is that you need to work really hard and play even harder. The reason why I say work really hard is because, you know, in the first two years of medicine, I had to work hard, but then it intensifies as you start clinical years because you start doing placement on top of all the studying you have to do. And you just really have to push this when medicine becomes medicine. And you know, you have to toughen up and just work super hard. But how you survive that is by playing even harder. I've tried to have as much fun as possible on the side because that's the only way you maintain your sanity. Second tip is make sure you get enough sleep because people undermine this in the first two years because you can always catch up on sleep. But then when you start your clinical years, usually you get busier. You're running like 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. sometimes and you have to wake up at like 6 and go to sleep at like 11. So, you know, you need to actually prioritize your sleep and that's the best way to maintain your body, maintain your health. Make sure you check out my Instagram as well, Naeem Ray, and thank you for watching this video. Hello, my name is Ben. I'm a foundation year doctor from Edinburgh and also one of the founders of OSCEsense, which is an OSCE revision tool aimed at students looking for a case-based approach to OSCE revision. It uses real cases lifted from foundation schools across the country. So if you want to check it out, it's at oscesense.com. So step one is kind of obvious. It's plan your revision. Whatever you think it's going to take, double it, and that's generally how long it will take. So the next tip, and this is specific mostly for OSCEs, but also for, you know, MCQ revision, is have a group that you revise with. Now, that's great because one, you have some company and it makes it a bit more enjoyable. Secondly, it means it motivates you to do little and often revision. So we got together maybe once a week or once every other week to do OSCE revision, and that really helps cement the structure in your mind. 
so that you're not stressed when you're cram revising about forgetting the structure. You can focus instead on your exam technique. Another great way to make sure you're practicing little and often is to team up with the other medical students on the ward. Often the junior doctors will be really busy and although they want to give you teaching and want to give you feedback, it's difficult. The next tip would be try not to avoid subjects and topics that you find difficult. As junior doctors now, we realize that we wish we'd done those stations more often because once you do them more often, once you drill them more, you become much more fluid at, at them and it just makes exams so much more, you know, enjoyable if you can forget the stress of remembering this sort of rigid sequence of events and instead you can focus on trying to see actual clinical signs. While we're talking about difficult subjects, uh, the next tip would be to make sure that you follow junior doctors when they're performing difficult skills, shadowing junior doctors when they're having difficult discussions and communication. So that includes breaking bad news or explaining something difficult to a patient or maybe even consenting them for a procedure or for a new medication. Don't forget that when you're in the exam, all they want from you is to prove that you're a safe junior doctor. So they're not expecting you to get every diagnosis right. They're not expecting you to get every treatment right. Just do the simple things. If, they, if they're in pain, make sure you give them pain relief. If they're feeling nauseous, make sure you give them an antiemetic. If they've got low blood pressure, make sure you give them fluid. You know, never hesitate to get a senior review. None of those things require a diagnosis, but they're just simple things that if you do well, make you look really slick in front of the examiner. Hey guys, it's Liddy here. And my name is Hazal. We are from Journey to Med and we wanted to give you guys our top tips for clinical years. I'll start it off. I would say that it's so important to kind of go into placement with a list of different activities and tasks yeah. that you want to complete. This will really help you establish yourselves on the ward and feel less out of place because you actually have a plan of action in mind of what you want to complete that day. And I would say during placement, it's easy to forget about the other knowledge you need to know. Mm -hmm. You kind of get caught up in all the different skills you're trying to learn on placement, yeah. but also make sure you're doing flashcards or going over your lecture notes throughout the year because at the end of the day, it in your final exams you're still going to be asked some scientific questions so you don't want to forget that knowledge. Hi I'm Jessica, I am a third year medical student at King's College London currently intercalating in a master's in psychiatry at the University of Cambridge. Um, my top tips for making the most out of clinical placement and maintaining some sort of work-life balance is when you go into placement, really try and engage. Know where you're going and what will be expected of you. Introduce yourself to everyone. You've got to be confident. You've got to put yourself out there and say, you know, I'm the medical student today and I would like to do this. Know what sign offs you want to get done. Ask questions and most importantly, talk to patients. When you feel like you have engaged to your engagement meter, max, then I recommend you know going home and taking some time to consolidate that knowledge. So I always write a very short reflection on what I learned during the day um, and how I found the placement and then do a bit of studying on some of the conditions that I saw. After that, relax because placement is tiring and you definitely need to be getting your rest because you will have to be doing this repetitively. Um, and really enjoy it. Get to know the patients that you're working with um, and the doctors and don't be afraid to ask questions because you are not there to be expected to know everything. So one of the first things that I would say that's super important when you start clinical placement is to look after yourself because it's going to be really intense, it's going to be pretty intense pretty quickly um, and it can be quite overwhelming. The first thing you want to do is make sure that you have some sort of stress relief, uh, hobby or anything like that just on lock because when things get hectic, the best thing that you can do for yourself is to unplug and to do something that makes you feel good. Now, the second thing that I would really say is to make sure you have a really good support system. I know this sounds like duh, but honestly, you'd be surprised uh, how when things get really stressful, if you don't have anyone to talk to about things, it can get really isolating quite quickly. Especially with placement, you're moving to different sites all the time, so you might not always keep the same friends or at least the same people that you, you see on each placement, you're going to move around quite a lot. That can be a little bit isolating. So you've got to make sure that you have a good support system uh, to talk to, to fall back on whenever you feel like it.
have something whether it's a notebook the oxford clinical handbook any of those things that you can kind of just look at the things that you're seeing to gain a wider context of the medical knowledge that you're gaining as you're going through things because it might not feel like it but you are learning things whilst you're on placement it just doesn't seem apparent unless you write it down or you're just keeping track of it somehow and finally the probably the biggest thing get stuck in now this doesn't mean that you have to get stuck in and be 100% all the time but getting stuck in right at the beginning can give you a really good idea of what you like and what you don't like so then you can focus on the things that you enjoy and the things that are most useful to you so when you start just do everything treat it like a playground try everything and just have fun so that is all for today don't forget to check the description for links to the social media of all the people that you've heard from today they also share a lot of really good tips on their pages and don't forget that the first tip to studying productively and effectively is to have a productive workspace which you enjoy sitting at for hours at a time so don't forget to check my video on how i've gone about creating the perfect study space and if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like subscribe and turn on post notifications and i'll see you in the next one